All right, let's learn about types of reactions and predicting products. So to start with, we're going to take a look at our textbook. Okay, our textbook says that there's a key part of reactions. Uh, one is that there's reactants and products. Okay, a reactant is what you're combining together. Okay, so it would the, be the milk, eggs, flour, okay, that you're making pancakes with, and then the products would be the pancakes. Okay, so when we did our experiment with um, hydrogen gas, we used zinc and hydrochloric acid. Those were our reactants and our products was hydrogen gas. Okay, so in this experiment here, yeah, it's right there. Okay, left-hand side is the reactants. So in this case, aluminum, which is a um, solid, right, tinfoil. Okay, and what's this? Copper chloride. Okay, um, so we're using copper two chloride specifically. Okay, and that's going to react to form. This is not equals, this is not math. Okay, so that reacts to form aluminum chloride and copper solid. Okay, which is kind of neat, right? You put these two things together and you get this. So you're basically um, what looks like oxidizing, but I don't know, it's not oxidizing because there's no oxygen. But there's a rea chemical reaction that's taken place, right? You can see there's a color change and it's not going to be reversible. So left-hand side, reactants, right-hand side, products. There, got the most important part from page 79, flip. Okay, next page. Um, reactions that form solids. Okay, you did that one in your experiment. Okay, you poured together vinegar and milk and you saw chunks. Right, those chunks are called uh, precipitate, right? So that's a chemical change. The end. We talked the other day about uh, writing the state of matter. Okay, so we put the little uh, G is for gas, and L is for liquid, AQ is for aqueous, and S is for solid. Okay, here's a aqueous one. Okay, that NaCl AQ. That's dissolved salt, okay, and there's carbon dioxide solid, right, which is weird because usually carbon dioxide is a gas, but this must be dry ice. Yep, frozen carbon dioxide, there you go, dry ice, okay. Um, something we might as well mention while we're here is something called a diatomic element, okay. You know that there's some kids at school, uh, girls in particular, where they're like absolutely best friends and they're completely inseparable and they're always together? Okay, there's a few elements that are like that. Okay, here's what they are. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine. Okay, uh, bromine and iodine are also like that. So basically, mostly halogens. And um, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Okay, so some of our compounds that we talked about the other day are the concepts of ionic and molecular compounds, right? And those are going to have different properties. So ionic or solid at room temperature, okay? Um, if it's very soluble, it's aqueous when it's dissolved in water. And molecular compounds are hard to predict, okay? The more likely they are to be gases if they are smaller, right? Okay, so gas and beeswax are your examples. Great. Uh, the next section that we want to focus on is the difference between exothermic and endothermic, which we discussed already when we were looking at our experiments. Okay, endothermic are the ones that cool off. So in these kinds of cold packs, which I don't have because they cost money, I just use peas um, or actual frozen cold, cold packs. Uh, they have chemicals in them where if you crack the casing on it, they mix and it gets cold. Okay, so they absorb energy. We already had questions on this from a different quiz, though. So, um, exothermic is where you release energy. So it's usually heat, light, or electricity. Okay, so that one where we put the hydrogen gas in a balloon and blew it up. Okay, it released heat. Same with the whoosh bottle, right? We poured some fuel in that blue bottle and the crazy Russian hacker did it too and you saw the fire go <laughs> and if you feel the bottle at the end it's hot 
Okay, um, we're trying really hard to also learn combustion and corrosion. Okay, those words are very similar, but they're not identical. Combustion is is reacting with oxygen and it's burning things. Okay, and corrosion is reacting with oxygen and more of a rust happens. Okay, like the um, Statue of Liberty, okay, that giant green statue in New York, okay, um, she was actually made of copper, okay, copper is sort of that orangey brown color, right, copper color, um, but she oxidized, and so she's green, because that's what color copper oxide is, fun facts, okay, so here's our formula, we have some reactants here, coal and oxygen, okay, um, so this is just a solid form of carbon. It usually has a bunch of impurities in it, though. That's how we usually have the sulfur and nitrous oxides, but we don't put that in grade 10 chemistry, so we don't have to. Um, this is oxygen. comes in a two-pack. Hey, this matters. Not two-pack like the wrapper, but a uh, two-pack. Um, and we list the state of matter. So solid here, gas there, reacts to form carbon dioxide and energy. Okay, so you don't see any little numbers in front of these yet because it's balanced. Okay, what do I mean? I mean the amount of atoms of each item is the same on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so let's count. C has no little numbers beside it, so that means there's only one. One carbon on this side, one carbon on this side, we're good. Two oxygens on this side, two oxygens on this side, we're good. Okay, but if you're looking at this one, you'll see there's a bunch of numbers. Okay, 2, 19, 12, 14. Okay, and that's to make sure that they balance. So to get the right amount of carbons on this side and the right amount of carbons on this side, they had to add extra molecules. Okay, this is a more complicated one. We'll start with some easier ones because, because we are. Okay, let's click through to this. Okay, left-hand side, products, reactants. Um, right now, this equation is not balanced. Okay, so Al is good, right? We have one of those on this side, one of these on this side. Copper is good. We have one on this side and one on this side. Um, but the chlorines aren't. There's three chlorines here, or two, and three chlorines here. So I know we're not balancing right this second, but let's do it anyway. Okay, so to make sure that I can have three on this side, I'm going to need some more on this side. Okay, so how about two? Two times two is four, that doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to try three. Three molecules of chlorine make six, that doesn't work because this is three. But if I put a two here, then I end up with six chlorines, so two times three is six. Six chlorines, we're good. Three times two chlorines is six, we're good. Okay, but now my other things don't balance. So now I have three coppers. So let's put three coppers here. Okay. And let's check the aluminum. It says two aluminums. Okay. Well, let's put two aluminums here. Now everything balances. Fabulous. Okay. So um, this bit is talking about conservation of mass. Okay. You can't just make something out of nothing. Right. So even if it looks like nothing is happening uh, or you're losing some material you're not okay it's being transferred e either in, sometimes into energy but usually just into a gas okay so if 100 grams of aluminum reacted with 10 grams of copper 2 chlorate what would be the mass of the product so this and this put together should be the same okay so it should be 110 on this side of the equation Okay, but when they measured it, they're saying, uh-oh, there's only 105 grams of products. What happened to the other 5 grams? Okay, either a gas was created or it was changed into energy. Okay, so since you're jotting down notes as best you can through these lessons, please make sure that you are putting conservation of mass. Okay, matter cannot be created or destroyed. Quite often you just ask that as a definition. What does conservation of mass mean? It means that matter cannot be created or destroyed. Okay, and in chemical change, 
you can't create or destroy them, they're just rearranged. Okay, so we have a picture here where it seems like we're destroying the wood by burning it on fire, okay, but it's not. It's being converted into something else. Heat, light, water vapor, carbon dioxide, okay, so that's how that goes. And there's a couple of types of rearrangements and different teachers try to like make it more fun um, with in different ways. So this is the old school show that we used to watch all the time. My grade three teacher was so smart. She put this on at lunchtime because we used to eat in the classroom. And uh, so we'd all be good because we never used to go out and get to watch shows back then. Like this was on cable. So and we were always mad because we could only watch 20 minutes of it. Then we had to go for recess which is fun too. Oh, you remember? Yeah, that's a good show. Um, so this is Fred and Wilma. They're married. And this is Betty and Barney. Yeah, Betty. Okay, Betty and Barney. And they're married. So this is talking about how the different reactions work. Okay, quite often they'll also use A plus B, like reaction A plus B. And I'll show you what those look like. Okay, so there are five types of reactions that we care about. One is called formation. So that's because you're trying to make something. So you take carbon, you take oxygen, you make carbon dioxide. Okay, you burn. That was one we just did in our in our book here. Okay, so you take carbon, you take oxygen, burn it together, you make carbon dioxide and energy. So that'd be formation. Okay, so two reactants combine to create a single product. Um, I would definitely need to write notes on this because otherwise I wouldn't remember it. Okay. So, for practice here, we would put what it makes. Lead for bromide makes lead bromide. Okay, calcium and nitrogen probably makes calcium nitride. Silver and oxygen okay, is probably going to be AgO, Ag2O3. And look at this, I even know where the buttons are. For superscript and subscript on here. Or maybe I don't, that's the font button. Oh, here it is. Found it. Okay, so um, I guess we should keep the same naming pattern. Okay, let's call that silver oxide because we're so good at naming now. PB, PR, and then we let four, so one minus charge makes it four. Subscript, good. Okay, so let's call that and put it back regular sized. I don't know how to put it back to like the regular sized uh, lid or oh, this is painful watching some of the tape. Okay, and I'll just put the brackets in the right spots because it doesn't go here. So lead and what should we say lead and bromine? Why does it say lead and bromide? Silly notes. Okay, makes lead bromide. No capitals, right? That's ah, one of the capital. Wow. There. One last bromine. Okay, so formation reactions, you do this last one. Okay, aluminum fluoride, Al, F3. Decomposition is when you're breaking something down. So in the space station, um, they need to get oxygen, right? It's kind of hard to breathe if you don't have any oxygen. So they run electricity through water, and that makes oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. And last thing I read said they were looking at uh, finding a way of capturing the hot hydrogen to use as a fuel. But um, a different thing I read said they just bent it out into space. Okay, but hydrogen is a very good source of energy, so as long as you don't blow anything up, uh, that would work good. Okay, so you're breaking something down into its elements. So A, B, like compound A, compound B. So hydrogen would be A, oxygen would be B, and you're breaking those down into two things. Okay, so it's the reverse of synthesis, so decomposition. It's like how um, subtraction or dividing or whatever is the opposite of adding and multiplication. Same thing. Okay, so decomposition is breaking them down. So these were together and I guess they split up. Okay, I'm going to have to pause that to make the next video.